Hi everyone, welcome to tip 11 of our top 12 interactive tips for Lynx Whiteboard. This one is all about how you can create sound buttons on any presentation within Lynx Whiteboard. First of all, you need to get yourself some sound files. There's two ways that I know to do this. One of them is you can go to um, free sound files websites, search and download them for yourselves. So there's some great websites on show here. Um, or on your Windows device, you've got the voice record app. So you can record whatever it is that you're doing on here. So you just tap this. Howdy folks. And that records your voice on your device as well. So you can make all of these files and then choose where it is that you're going to uh, save them. I'll just stop that one there rather than pause it. And there you can see recording five. Now we need to get our saved sound files into a Lynx presentation. So here's one that I've already been making. It's all about recognizing the spelling of the OO sound. So it's a phonics lesson. I've got flu here with an aeroplane, blue with some blueberries, and underneath here it says moon. So I'm using from in here the content area to search for a picture of the moon. So I've typed in moon and I'm going to go to Pixabay clip art. Now there's some great moon images here. I think I'm going to go for this one. I just drag it out and pop it onto the page. Whoa, it's a little bit large, but that's okay. All I have to do is shrink it down to the size I want it to be and position it. Now, this is just an image at the moment, but I can turn it into a sound button as I've already done for flu and for blue. And the way you can tell I've done that already is because there's the link icon in the top left of both of these. But the moon doesn't have that yet. I haven't got it to link to anything. So to do that, we go to the three dots menu and we're going to go to link. This brings up our hyperlinks menu. So with a hyperlink, we could have it jump to another slide or have an action like to go back a slide. But really what we want it to do is to open a file, our sound file. So we're going to select file. And in my documents, I know that I have a folder called sound recordings. Here it is. So it's got all sorts of recordings in here that I've downloaded. So I've got a, um, another uh, nice activity to do with musical instruments and so on. Um, and I've made some interactive stories where there's sound files of some of the monsters that you might meet on the journey. So you can have any type of sound file that you like. So I'm looking for the one that says, ooh, for moon. So I select it and I hit select and I say, okay. And now you can see we've got the chain link icon for the moon. If I want to test this, I just have to tap on it. And when I press it, you'll hear my daughter's voice. She made this button for moon me. Moon for moon. There she is. Now, really though, when I want to use this in the activity, it's much better if I'm in presentation mode. So stack a menu here and I go to start presenting. And now when I tap on each of the icons, it will come to life. Right. Thank you very much, Tallulah, for creating those for me. And for me. just test our last one as well. And then, of course, the children can interact using the pens and so on, and they can come up with their own words that they want to add to each section. So fully interactive and sound buttons included. So just as an extra example of sound buttons, here on this activity where I'd like children to identify musical instruments, what they can do is tap on an instrument and it starts to play and they can move the words next to the instrument. I quite like this because you can actually layer the sound buttons as well. So guitar can be playing. They can kind of play over the top of one another. So they work really well once you've created those links. Good luck. <laughs>